Alrighty, thank you for everyone for coming and for sticking with us through our technical difficulties. Um, we are here to tell you some more about the RISE Peer Mentor Program, which stands for Relationships in STEM Education. Um, as you may know, we're recording this. You will not be recorded. Um, it's just for us so that we can share this afterwards with more people. Um, there will be a time for questions at the end and also for you to stick around and ask questions of any of us here. Um, so if you have any questions, just hold them until the end and we will talk to you about it then. Um, and we are going to go ahead and introduce all of ourselves in the panel. So if we could all just go through and share your name and your major or your department um, and what your role is with the Peer Mentor Program, uh, I can start. Uh, my name is Abby Ulofoscio, and I am the director of the RISE program. Uh, I don't have a department, I just help all of STEM. Um, and yeah, I'm the director. All right, uh, my name is Dr. Tucker Howey. Um, I have a PhD in material science and engineering, and I'm one of the engineering faculty here at Edmonds. And I work as a faculty advisor um, for the peer mentoring program. And I'm actually kind of the one who actually initiated and created this program. My name is Allison Oburn, and I am computer science faculty and the faculty advisor as well. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kiana Pham, and my major is Industrial Engineering, and I'm one of the peer mentors. Uh, hi, my name is Kavindu Thajapalakumbura. I'm a mentee. Uh, my major is Aerospace Engineer. Perfect. Okay. And now we're going to describe our roles a little bit to you because you may be interested in what is a mentor or what is a mentee, what is a faculty advisor, uh, what do you all do? So uh, any of you can start, go ahead and just describe a little bit about what your role is and what you do, maybe what a week in the peer mentor program looks like from the perspective of your role. All right, I can start. Um, so as an advisor, um, essentially, you know, mostly just there when questions come up and, you know, if there are any guidance that you need help with, you know, if you're a mentor and, you know, your, your mentee has a question, um, can be there to help you answer or point you towards resources and just in general, just a resource that you can come to whenever you, you know, need help um, with anything that's going on in the program. Perfect. Yeah, so as a peer mentor, we tend to meet every once every week or every two weeks and at the beginning of the quarter we discuss about what their goals are. These could be their academic goals or personal goals and then my job is to help them succeed in that. This could be either leading them to resources or just talking to them and listening. Uh, so as a mentee, uh, I'm mainly just uh, I schedule a meeting with uh, Kiana and then uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I sometimes I have questions about like specific things either in my class or um, something like that but um, mainly over like the past uh, couple of months uh, it's been about like college and like college applications which she's been a uh, uh, and like uh, she's been able to help me with that type of stuff. Awesome, thank you. Okay, um, and next we'll go through what has your experience with the RISE Peer Mentor Program been like? So I can say from my experience as the director, it has been so rewarding to be able to work with a variety of students, um, whether it be in my role as a supervisor for the mentors or also getting to know some of the mentees um, and just being able to see the progress that the mentees have made over time and also um, just how the mentors have grown in their professional development and just getting able to serve all of our STEM student population. Um, that has been really wonderful for me as the director. Yeah, and so my experience, you know, is again mostly from that advising role, but one of the things I would say, um, you know, since we started this peer mentoring program um, is that one of the things I've gotten out of it is just seeing the students' growth and sort of the excitement that they get out of, you know, making the connections and, and finding all those answers that they would normally struggle to, to get and just feeling part, more part of the college, more like they, you know, 
can belong here and that they can succeed. And so, um, you know, just seeing how much it's impacting and having a positive effect on the students who participate in the program has been um, probably one of the best things I've gotten out of being a part of this. I have some similar things being an advisor, but see, getting to see the growth of our mentors as they have progressed throughout uh, the program, um, being able to pass on some of those hard learned lessons um, has been great to see. And also just the, the feeling of having a community, I, it can be uh, kind of overwhelming on campus to figure out how to connect with peers, especially uh, when you're taking a lot of online classes. And uh, it's, it's a great uh, resource um, for students to get connected in. Yeah, for me, the experience has been really great so far because like, I'm a very like introverted person naturally, so it gave me the opportunity to talk to more people. And for Kavindu, we met last summer when we took Calculus 1 together. And then I just told him to like join the program since I knew him a little bit. And then like we became like really good friends out of this. So that's something that I've gained out of this experience. Uh, for me, yeah, it was nice because it's kind of hard to uh, make friends at uh, Edmonds because uh, everyone's just like trying to get through their classes and uh, so it was nice to be able to talk to somebody but also um, uh, l like get, you know, a sit, like uh, help from someone that's experienced more, especially in like, uh, you know, uh, in like college and like uh, high school as well. Definitely, thank you. And I think we might have answered this a little bit, but just if there's anything that any of you want to add, um, how have you benefited from being a member of RISE and what opportunities have you gotten as a part of RISE that you may have missed out on otherwise? Yeah, so I can add a little bit more there, I guess. So if, if you remember, you know, the R in or RISE stands for relationship. Um, and again, that's kind of been, and you heard I, uh, Kiana and uh, Kavindu talk about, you know, the, one of the biggest things we're getting out of the program is just building relationships. And those relationships are so important um, for, you know, not just students, but, you know, as faculty as well, building those relationships with students. And so um, that's been one of the most rewarding parts of being a part of this is, you know, being able to forge those bonds with the students and really understand more about, you know, how they're doing and you know being able to share in their successes as well and I think being in this community has helped me a lot because as being like in a leadership role I've been able to ask for more help especially like from professors since my mentees sometimes have questions it allows me to ask the questions for them or help them ask the questions uh, for me uh, I mainly benefited because I'm a big procrastinator so having someone on top of me and uh, like, uh, uh, you know, making sure that I'm doing my work, uh, especially with like um, college applications, because I mainly waited until like the last day to submit most of those. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it was nice. Uh, uh, I think I would have definitely missed out on getting into a, a bunch of those colleges because I like was late to apply or something. <laughs> I'm glad that you didn't miss out. <laughs> and Kavindu, what colleges did you get into? Where are you going to school? Oh, so uh, I'm going to UW next year uh, for engineering to uh, DTC. So, awesome. Yeah. Okay, and just on another side of the program, what is one challenge or frustrating moment that you faced as part of this program? I can definitely start on that one. Um, <laughs> And that was mainly because uh, I said I was uh, one of the ones who was on the ground trying to get this program started. And, um, you know, we were really excited about it. We launched it in winter quarter of 2020, which if any of you know kind of what happened at the end of winter qu quarter of 2020, that's when COVID <laughs> started. So we're trying to build this program that's all about relationships. And then immediately everyone has to kind of be separate. 
So, but in a good way, um, or, you know, a good thing about that, I think that helps a lot of people actually during the pandemic as well, because that's what a lot of the experience people were missing, um, you know, in their classes and in sort of, sort of college experience was having the relationship, having someone they could reach out to. And so it was very frustrating to <laughs> immediately, you know, after one quarter kind of have to completely shift gears. But again, I think it was actually really fortunate in a way that we launched the program at that time when we did. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one of the more frustrating, uh, there's, there's two uh, things that have been a little tough that I've, I've seen. Um, one is just that because we have a, we're a two-year school, uh, it, I know for a lot of us, we feel kind of intimidated about, do I know enough to be a mentor? Um, and uh, so you do, don't worry. Uh, I, I uh, think it's perfectly, it's totally normal. You're still taking uh, your, your intro classes in some areas, you might be in the same classes as some of your mentees, but you still have a lot of really valuable knowledge that you can pass on to them. Uh, so, I think, you know, I think a lot of people would be fantastic mentors who, who maybe aren't considering applying. Um, the other slightly frustrating thing is just simply that everyone is so busy, uh, people can get distracted and, and uh, sometimes their mentors will try and get a hold of them to help them out and I know you can get just so overwhelmed, you, uh, it's hard to respond to that, uh, but we want, we want to make sure to help if that happens. Yeah. yeah, the only issue that I face, it was like a small issue, but it was just like finding time to do homework while still having meetings, because we do meet like once every week or every other week, and I have like a few mentees, so that means like every week I meet like maybe like three or four times, and then... So like when I when I did my homework, there would be like a meeting in between that, and then sometimes my productivity like stops after that. So like in the fall quarter, I had my meetings in the like afternoon, and that tended to lower my productivity. So I learned from that, and then in the winter and spring quarters, I moved my meetings like 11, 12 ish, and then so it gives me like the rest of the day to finish my homework, and I found that helpful. Oh, I didn't really have any. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. To. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I was going to add one thing to kind of go on um, what Allison was talking about, too. Part of the reason why we have this as peer mentoring program is because, you know, you, those peers those who have been here just a little bit longer, they have those experiences that you may be going through, um, you know, in the near future. And so they're in a much better position to give you some information than perhaps the faculty are, you know, because we're not going through the classes anymore. You know, mm -hmm. for me, it was about 20 years ago that I was taking classes, so, and it's, it's different. And so that, that's another big aspect of that peer uh, relationship there and why, you know, as Allison's saying, you do have the experience if you've been here a while, because you have that institutional knowledge, that experience of just being in classes that can be helpful to, you know, people you know, are just starting or, you know, need that extra guidance to find their way through their, their college career. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think one thing that's been a challenge for me and I think for the whole program is just that some people sign up for the program, they think it's really cool and they want to be a part of it, but they don't necessarily know the expectations of the program um, or what it requires or really even what it's about. They just think it sounds awesome. Um, and then they maybe get matched with a mentor and like Allison said, they get really busy. They have a lot going on in their life. Maybe something extra stressful happens and then they kind of drop off and we never hear from them again. Um, and so that's been just a really difficult part of the program because we want to keep supporting people over time and really retain those people and build those relationships. And that does take time um, and effort from both parties to be able to meet consistently. And something I started doing was meeting with the mentees personally uh, before they got matched with a mentor. And so being able to set those expectations and really make sure that uh, their goals are in align with the program has really helped 
um, and the mentees that have decided, yes, this is the program for me, uh, have continued and done really well in the program. So that's been a positive that came out of that challenge. And maybe for Kiana and Kavindu specifically, how have you grown as a result of being in the RISE program? I think I've just overall been able to like, talk and meet more people out of this because I don't think if I, if I didn't enjoy it, I don't think I would have like, talked to so many people. And it's kind of made me more assertive in a good way because for, at least for our status class, like at the beginning of the quarter, I created like a Discord chat for the whole class since there wasn't really a way to communicate unless we were in person. And that has helped a lot for like homework. And I feel like just like becoming more of a people person has been the case. Uh, for me, yeah, I think it was uh, mainly, I've gotten better at, uh, you know, managing my time and, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, planning, uh, like making schedules and like planning out my day, uh, which I've learned from Kiana because she actually like, plans out her whole week <laughs> and everything, so, yeah. Perfect. Okay, and maybe more for you two, our advisors. Why is peer mentorship important, particularly in STEM? So, yeah, so we've already touched on that a little bit, um, but, you know, one of the reasons peer mentorship is important um, is, as we talked about, those relationships. And when we talk about college, we don't often think about how important those relationships are. But, you know, the research has really shown that a big part of whether people stay in college, whether they're successful, actually depends on the relationships they build during that, you know, that time there. Because, you know, college is very stressful. And there are times where a lot of people are just kind of overwhelmed and like, I cannot do this or, you know, I don't know what I'm doing and, I, you know, I'm not ready or I'm not able to do this. Um, but having people in your corner who are there to say, you know, hey, I've been through something similar and you can get through this and just be able to, you know, help you out um, is just a tremendous um, asset and really helpful for making you feel successful but also making you feel like you're part of the community as well because that's another big aspect that they found is that you know, being part of that community makes you feel like you can keep going. Right? There's a purpose to it. I think also uh, when you're taking all these really tough classes, it is, it's easy to say when, to yourself when you're uh, maybe not doing as well as you wish you were, oh my goodness, am I cut out for this? Maybe I can't, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I should uh, switch to something else that's easier. And everyone, everyone goes through that at some point, just about. And when having somebody that you can talk to uh, when you're in that situation, uh, who can say, you know, yeah, I was there with a class. And here's, first of all, here's what I did to make it better. But also, here's what I would tell myself looking back. Um, because it probably won't have been that long ago. I think that can be incredibly beneficial, uh, as well as connecting you to a network sometimes of people, other people in your field. Uh, so you can learn more about it. You can learn the all the huge number of options for careers and schools and uh, really help you find the right uh, fit for you. And, especially for those of us who might not uh, know anybody else in our field, might be coming from uh, a background where we, where we don't have anybody we can uh, say, ask, you know, what do you do all day at work? Um, having some other people around uh, between everybody, somebody's got a connection who can uh, give you some really interesting perspective on that. And of course, the, the community aspect as well, especially uh, I know in in my classes uh, there sometimes we don't have a tremendously diverse population in class, and uh, if if you're in a class and you feel like oh gosh, I'm kind of alone, then it can be. I think really, really beneficial to have somebody, somebody outside to, to chat with. 
Thank you both. Can I add something to that? Yeah. I think this mentorship program would also be really helpful for Running Start students. Yeah. Because when I was in Running Start, I didn't know that this existed. And it was like hard to navigate like what classes to take and if they would transfer back to high school mm -hmm. or if they would transfer to high school or a university. So like if like having this, like I could talk them into like we have advisors to help you plan these classes. Like I didn't know there were advisors when I was in Running Start. So I just like planned the classes based on the credits for high school. Mm -hmm. So like I took like an English class that was five credits, but it didn't transfer as like an English course back into like a university. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is good for guiding Running Start students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I, helpful insight. And you yeah. have the probably the most up to date yeah. knowledge too, because yeah. we try really hard to keep up with all this, but it is such a changing landscape. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And one last question for the panel. Uh, would you recommend this program to a friend, student, or peer and explain? Okay, well obviously, yes, I would definitely <laughs> recommend it um, for the reasons that we basically talked about here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is a program that, you know, is, and one of the things, you know, we've, we've talked about so the mentor helping the mentee, but one of the things that we see too is just not the mentee the, is the one who gets a lot out of the program. It's a reciprocal relationship. Um, the the mentor, you know, will often get a lot out of it too because they, you know, they might have to learn something new to help their their mentee. Um, and so, you know, there's so many beneficial aspects to this that students have found, and you know, we've, you know, we get all sorts of quotes about how helpful the, the program has been to really helping them be successful, not only here at the community college, but as they go on, you know, it gives them, as like Kiana has been talking about, more, you know, confidence and, you know, ability to feel like they can navigate these systems, because college is pretty complicated. And as a, especially for people who are new, it can be very difficult to figure out exactly how it works. And so this is another sort of resource that can be there for students to help them uh, figure out how to get through and succeed so that they can achieve their goals. Definitely. Also, along with what Kiana was saying, I think for a lot of us who maybe have a harder time meeting people or being assertive on our own behalf, uh, it's a lot easier to be assertive on somebody else's mm -hmm. if you're trying to support somebody else. And then once once you do that, you realize, oh wait, I can, I can, uh, be a sort of for myself too. And uh, so I, I think it can be a really good growing experience and you will also potentially get, it's a mentor experience of other, other areas that are close but not identical. Uh, and here you often can hear from mentees when you talk about goals, Sometimes there's something fantastic you have never heard about before that you think, huh, maybe, maybe I want to do that too. <laughs> so I, from the mentor perspective, I think there's a lot to get out of it. In that sense, it's also um, a good way to have a, try out a leadership position, see if that feels like a good fit for you. And um, from the mentee perspective, you have somebody who can answer your questions, and I know uh, sometimes it can be a little scary to go talk to your uh, professor of, of your class, but with, if you have a mentor, well, you can check in with your mentor, and also your mentor can help you with that process, feeling, feeling comfortable enough to... Yeah. <laughs> Adding on to what they said, I would recommend this program like as a mentee perspective to anyone who is either like a first year or a running star student or anyone who's like kind of newer to college because there's a lot of things that you have to plan out on your own. Like you have to email people often, you have to ask questions so you know what you're doing. And I feel like like as a mentor we're able to give you all those resources or like show you like clubs that you might have been interested in but didn't know about or like the library and they can help you find resources also. Uh, yeah, I would also recommend it uh, to, especially like running search students, like we said, uh, 
But uh, yeah, I, I told my sister to uh, make sure to sign up uh, <laughs> because uh, yeah, because uh, you can get help specifically for like the major you're going into uh, with like someone that's like taking the, taking those classes and like uh, talk to the people they need to talk to, and uh, yeah, so it's really helpful in that sense. Yeah. I hope that we see your sister <laughs> next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you all on the panel. We're going to switch a little bit into more of the logistics. I think you've heard a lot about the why of the program um, and what all the roles do. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the application process um, and just more of the expectations of the program. Uh, but first, we're going to talk just a little bit about the purpose. Um, so the mission statement of the program that wonderful Dr. Tucker Howie came up with um, is to make students feel that they belong and can be successful in college and life by matching them with peers who can support their growth and development as people and as students specifically. Um, and we want to support their personal growth, their sense of belonging in college, uh, their academic success, so getting good grades, um, and also being able to uh, persist and have that student retention, so continuing in whatever program they're, they're in, um, staying in college, um, and then that knowledge of resources and access to resources, and then just campus involvement and community, that feeling of belonging. So the Bryce Peer Mentor Program uh, provides students, obviously, with mentorship. That's really the big one. Um, to have a mentor, to really advocate for mentees, um, to build a relationship with and just support the mentee, uh, whether that be academically or more personally. Um, there's also connections with faculty um, and fun events and resources. So I just wanted to say that we'll have an event next week that'll be a trivia night. Um, it'll be from 5 to 7 on Wednesday, um, and anyone is welcome to come. So if you are interested in that, you are more than welcome to come. I'll send out more information about that as well. Um, so specifically for mentors, mentors are students who have taken at least 45 credits. Um, they're experienced students. Like Allison said, uh, I think we kind of ask ourselves, are we really experienced enough? Do we really know enough? Um, and if you're wondering that, I think that you should just apply um, and I can always review your application. Um, we do try to stick to the 45 credits, but if you maybe have a lot of background experience or professional experience um, or just a very organized and proactive student and feel like you would be great for this role and have a little bit less than 45 credits, I would still encourage you to apply. Um, and mentors are positive role models, they're knowledgeable guides, um, they're active and compassionate listeners, and they're just cheerleaders for their mentees. So if that sounds like you, um, I would encourage you to apply. And then after you apply, what happens? So I would review your application, um, and then I would get back to you and let you know if you were selected for an interview for the position or not. Uh, we only need about 10 or less mentor positions um, every year, and it does run fall through spring. Um, so we ask that mentors are available for the whole academic year because, as we've talked about, building that relationship is really important. So we want our mentors to be able to stick around um, and have their mentees for the full academic year if possible. Um, and so if I select you for an interview, then we'll have an interview. Um, and then if you are chosen for the position, then we'll go through the hiring process together. Um, and then there will be a mandatory training session and all that good stuff. Um, and mentees, on the other hand, can be from any student group. So I get this question a lot if they can be running start students, international students, part-time students, full-time students. Um, any student group can be a mentee. Um, really, the biggest qualification is that they need to be getting a STEM or pre-nursing or healthcare degree, um, and they need to be getting an associate's or direct transfer degree. Um, so students who are pursuing a certificate or just pursuing a couple classes here would not qualify. We um, are really looking for students who are getting their whole associate's degree, um, and specifically students who are in need of extra support, whether that be academic support or just wanting more community and resources. Um, if that sounds like you, again, I'd encourage you to apply. Um, and mentees are also really engaged in their learning um, and in the pursuit of their goals and taking responsibility for their learning. And part of that might be joining this program and getting connected to a mentor uh, so that they can meet those goals. 
and what happens after a mentee applies. Um, after a mentee applies, I would review their application, um, and then we would meet together, and we would get to know each other, because I want to make sure that the program is a good fit for you. Um, so we would talk about what the mentee's goals are, what they're interested in, uh, what's really important to them. Uh, I would explain the details of the program more, um, and then if they decide, yes, this is the program for me, I think this sounds awesome, then I would say, great. Um, and I would match them with a mentor, usually by email, either the next day or a few days later. Or if there's not a mentee available at that time, I would put them on a wait list. Um, and if a spot opens up, then I would match them. Um, if we have that meeting and then they decide, hey, actually, I don't think this is the right program for me, but maybe I still need resources, I would connect them to other resources like uh, our MESA program or the STEM study room. We have the Learning Support Center. Um, and lots of other resources on campus that might be helpful even if this program isn't right for you. And then just some brief expectations for mentors and mentees. Uh, like I said, mentors go through a really thorough training, so we try to equip our mentors well um, to be able to provide that support to mentees. Um, and then they also meet bi-weekly uh, with me and our faculty advisors um, and the other mentors. So we really try to make it a team effort to support all the mentees and make sure that we're building community as a team among the mentors as well. Um, and again, just equip them with that professional development to be leaders. Um, and then they meet with their mentees at least once every other week. Uh, sometimes they meet once a week, multiple times a week. Sometimes they just meet every other week. It's really up to them and the mentee, uh, but the every other week is a requirement. Um, and they participate in at least one RISE event a quarter. Um, and on the mentee side, the mentees, again, meet with their mentor at least every other week. Um, and they are actively engaged with their mentors. So if their mentor reaches out to them, they'll respond within 24 hours or so. Um, and they participate in at least one RISE event per quarter, and usually we have about two to three, so there's multiple options. Um, if someone can't come to one event, there's usually another one that they can come to. Um, and again, they take responsibility for their learning and their goals. Um, and our team here, uh, just some information for you is me um, and my email, and then the RISE email, rise at edmunds.edu, is always available for anyone that's interested in the RISE program and our faculty coordinators or advisors. Uh, you've met Dr. Tucker Howie for engineering and for computer science, Allison, and biology slash pre-nursing slash pre-healthcare is Dr. Lori Hayes, who's right there, even though you can't see her on the camera. <laughs> she will be our faculty advisor for next year um, for that group of students, so you can contact her as well. And then our communication li liaison, who does a lot of behind the scenes work on our website and marketing for students and all that good stuff, um, is Crystal Thompson. And she is wonderful as well, but couldn't be here today. So thank you all for listening. Um, if you have any questions for us, feel free to ask them now. You can also stick around and talk to any of us personally. Um, yeah. <laughs>